Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. We have a great show for you this week. There's just tons of news and happenings and new music and movements back and forth in the world of marijuana politics and medical marijuana and the, the front to legalize cannabis globally. Uh, we have some great film clips for you this week, including ones with Dubtonic Crew, a Jamaican band that won MTV's Battle of the Bands for the global best new band of the year. We also have uh, uh, Toots Hibbert of Toots and the Maytals, who give us a brief shout out to our audience. Mr. Tim Pate is standing by. You got to play there with Dubtonic Crew in that video. Oh, cool. That's the one you used, is it? That's the one. Yeah, That's no, the one. We'll that was the best one. There a little bit. For sure. And so uh, we'll be back with some of the latest hemp news in just a few moments after we bring on the infamous dancing cannabis leaves. I feel the force. Hemp News starts with some news right here in Oregon. There's move to increase the fee on medical marijuana here in the state of Oregon that has already passed the state Senate. It's a finance bill that uh, specifically will raise the fee on medical marijuana and disqualify many people who get the low income fee when they file their paperwork with the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program at the state office. So. Uh, the, the bill is moving forward. There is going to be a meeting on Monday at uh, 800 Northeast Oregon Street. I believe that's at 1.30 in the afternoon. And so uh, it's a meeting of the uh, uh, ACMM, a citizens committee that uh, advises the uh, Oregon Medical Marijuana Program Office. So the uh, proposal says that they would raise the fee from $100 for patients to a fee that would be the highest in the nation, $200 a year for patients. It would also establish a new fee of $200 per caregiver or grower. So a patient could have to pay four to $600 a year in state fees, up from $100. It would also disqualify recipients of food stamps, and uh, other government programs and limit it to people who get supplemental security income from the federal government who would get be eligible to get the low income fee which would also go up from uh, 20 to 25 dollars. So we urge you if you oppose this to contact the state house and the Joint Ways and Means Committee. Uh, there's going to be a vote in the house and then it'll go to the governor's desk. Uh, then they're going to have to uh, uh, work through some administrative law rules to support that. So there's going to be an advisory committee on medical marijuana, an ACMM meeting at the Oregon building here in Portland, Oregon at 800 Northeast Oregon Street at uh, 1.30 this coming Monday, uh, the 20th. So we urge you, if you're interested to get down and attend that meeting, be very respectful. It's good to present written testimony as well. The uh, first dispensary was arrested and, or busted here in Oregon this week, the Wake and Bake Dispensary. Uh, I think that uh, naming a dispensary for medical marijuana, Wake and Bake, is a pretty sad play on words and one that have uh, uh, cost these patients and these uh, business owners uh, dearly here in the past few days. Uh, I think that was a poor choice of names and invited uh, scrutiny. There are a lot of uh, uh, reputable people trying to help supply medical cannabis to patients through the dispensary model. And uh, I believe the owner of this uh, business was trying to do that, but she had a very poor choice in names, I believe, that uh, kind of made us all look bad to call a medical marijuana dispensary wake and bake. 
But then up in Washington state, there's some moves to uh, uh, limit medical marijuana there. There was a, a bill passed by Washington Governor Christine Gregoire that uh, uh, she saw, went through and line item vetoed all the good points out of a new dispensary bill, but left the bad parts. And several of the bad parts will demand that all dispensaries in Washington state close or be explicitly against the law here at the 1st of uh, July. It also puts mandates on healthcare practitioners that uh, we believe are unreasonable and uh, uh, there are moves to stop that. So uh, we'll be talking more about uh, uh, the new rule implementation in uh, the new Washington medical marijuana law. In Colorado, a group of patient advocates, uh, Sensible Colorado, it's run by a, a lawyer, Brian Vincente, filed a suit against a new set of rules that the Colorado legislature had passed limiting caregiver rights and caregivers' ability to, to care for more than five patients. So uh, they have filed a lawsuit to stop those new rules from going into effect. Our next story tonight is from New Orleans. Uh, it's a medical story. The long-term administration of Delta-9 THC, the primary psychoactive compound in marijuana, is associated with decreased mortality in monkeys infected with the simian immunodeficiency virus, SIV, a primate model of HIV, or human immune deficiency virus, or AIDS. Uh, the disease, according to in vivo experimental trial data published in the June issue of the Journal of AIDS Research in Human Retroviruses, Investigators at the Louisiana State University Health Sciences Center assessed the impact of chronic intramuscular THC administration compared to placebo on immune and metabolic indicators of SIV disease during the initial six-month phase of infection. The researchers reported, quote, contrary to what we expected, Delta-9 THC treatment clearly did not increase disease progression and initially resulted in generalized attenuation of classic markers of HIV of SIV disease, end quote. The authors also reported that THC administration was associated with decreased early mortality from SIV infection and retention of body mass. The investigators concluded, quote, these results indicate that chronic Delta-9 THC does not increase viral load or aggravate morbidity and may actually ameliorate uh, immune deficiency disease progression. Clinical trials have previously documented that the short-term inhalation of cannabis does not adversely impact viral loads in HIV patients and may even improve immune function. The full text of this study, Cannabinoid Administration, attenuates the progression of simian immune deficiency virus. It's available online at uh, uh, Libert Online. That's L-I-B-E-R-T online.com. That's L-I-E-B-E-R-T-O-N or T online.com. Our next story is from the Netherlands out of The Hague. Dutch lawmakers are moving forward with plans to prohibit foreign travelers from patronizing coffee shops that openly sell small quantities of marijuana. According to uh, government officials in an announcement last week, uh, quote, the Dutch cabinet expects that closure of coffee shops to foreign tourists will ensure that they no longer travel to the Netherlands to purchase and consume cannabis, end quote. Dutch residents will still be permitted to frequent the establishments which will function as private clubs rather than facilities that are open to the general public. The new policy, quote, will roll out in the southern provinces of Limburg, Noord, Brabant, and Zeeland by the end of this year and the rest of the country, including Amsterdam, next year, according to Reuters Wire News reports. Last year, the European Court of Justice, Europe's highest court, ruled that Dutch, the Dutch cabinet is within its legal rights to impose such a ban on so-called drug tourism. The proposed change has been called a tourism suicide by members of the Dutch parliament who oppose the ban. Our uh, last story tonight is uh, out of New Jersey. New Jersey's Governor Chris Christie won't implement the state's medical marijuana law until the federal government assures him that they won't prosecute anyone for working in the program. The federal government's not given similar assurances to any other states running medical marijuana programs. However, under President Barack Obama, the Department of Justice has not sought to prosecute anyone working in a state-approved medical marijuana program. Christie said in an appearance at the On the Line call-in show, which was televised uh, on Thursday in New Jersey, quote, the federal government saying medical marijuana is against the law until I get 
uh, that assurance, I cannot ask people to do things they might get prosecuted by federal prosecutors for." End quote. Christie said his office has written two letters to the United States Attorney for New Jersey, Paul Fishman, and has not received a response. Well, that's the end of our hemp news segment tonight. How are you doing over there, Tim? <laughs> that's a lot of news. We have that's, a lot of things going on this week. Yes, we. And in fact, even we even made the news this week in yeah. our, in our concert that we have uh, discovered that one of the neighborhood associations has decided to uh, to go ahead and ask the city council to deny us our, our uh, permit. And well, so we isn't have it a, just one guy. It's not the whole neighborhood association. Well, it's just this one board member. He claims to be representing the whole uh, neighborhood association. So we will see. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. But uh, uh, it is an opportunity for us to go before the city council this next uh, Thursday at so 2 o'clock. So that happens this Thursday on April 23rd at what, 2 p.m.? 2 p.m. And so we will have an opportunity to go In before City them. Hall. In City right Hall. Right here yeah. in River City. Uh, welcome anybody who would like to come and, and uh, represent because we definitely will be there and, and we'll be speaking. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I'm certain that they will have... Uh, Something to say. Hopefully, we will have a decision that day concerning our permit and and uh, everything else. Though, on the process is already well, we been went through completed. the soundboard for the noise variance uh, permit, and they voted unanimously That's to correct. issue that permit. Now, That's how many correct. members are there on the noise variance? Board? Uh, well, they have five members on the board, and uh -huh. they had a core, full quorum that night. So, yeah, full so quorum. Were there? We got five to nothing. No, not not. They, no, I said a full quorum. They had a quorum. Okay, so, but it, it was still a unanimous Does that decision. Mean three or four? That or three. Three. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. but they all said yeah, yes. Three decision. Okay. That was enough for me. Yeah. I mean that. Nobody you know, said no. Nobody said no. That's good. And I think that if the, all five of them were there, it would have been the same. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how I believe. So anyway, yeah, we have uh, had an interesting week, and uh, yeah. uh, and hopefully that will all pan out here very soon. And I'm certain that it will actually. In the meantime, uh, <sighs> this is kind of the song I feel like tonight. Tim Pate. Thank you. Well, if you are watching out there and you have a question about ending adult marijuana prohibition or restoring industrial hemp or helping medical marijuana patients, you can call us right now at that number there on your screen. It's 503-288-4448. That's 503-288-4448. We'll be taking your calls right up to the top of the hour. We also have a number of film clips we're going to roll this evening, including... Uh, uh, Toots and the Maytals, brief clip with him on the bus down the in bus. the southern USA. Oh, very cool. Oh, you have a copy of the federal letter there? I do actually have a copy of the federal letter here. The one I referred to in our first story I this did. evening. Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to read Second some excerpts story. from it if you want me at any point. Well, if you feel like you want to, sure. Sure. Well, okay. This is the uh, from the Dwight C. Holton, United States Attorney. I'm going to come over here. Okay. I'll, I'll do it this way. 
U.S. Department of Justice, District of Oregon. Uh, and this is uh, to one of the owners and operators of these clinics. It's, so I won't read which one, but it is definitely to one. Uh, it has come to our investigators' attention that you may be operating a dispensary for marijuana or that property you own may be used as a marijuana dispensary. Both Oregon and federal law make it illegal to sell marijuana, period. It makes no difference what purpose the marijuana is used for or whether the sale is cloaked as a trade of marijuana in so exchange they wrote the for word donation. Period, in there. period, you see that. Okay. Period. Uh, yeah, distribution of marijuana in exchange for money violates the law. People and businesses who run these operations are subject to criminal prosecution, civil enforcement, and seizure of assets. Financing a marijuana dispensary or allowing one to operate on your property also violates federal law and could subject financiers and landlord landlords to civil and criminal penalties, including forfeiture of any assets used in support of the distribution of marijuana. So uh, I can read on, but basically it comes, you know, it comes it's down to there. It's a of war. It is. I urge you, it concludes, to cease any distribution of marijuana in violation of federal law and to take appropriate steps to ensure that your property is not being used to further criminal distribution of marijuana. So basically they crack down, well I guess the Washington County authorities are really the ones who crack down against this wake and bake lounge yeah, they're over out in Washington there in County. Washington, but they just kind of were biting at the bit. The Washington County Sheriff has been a long time opponent of medical marijuana. He had the state Supreme Court overturn his ban on issuing concealed weapon permits to medical marijuana card holders. He's been uh, leading the charge, as have people in his office in the state legislature, right. to curtail right. medical marijuana growers and, and coming up with all sorts of horrible scare stories and uh, malicious and dr dishonest, laws. Mi dishonest uh, PowerPoint presentations it's to crazy. mislead legislators into thinking there's some sort of a problem. When, when a public fact, official is, is lying in order to back up his statements and he benefits in from it economically. That's the real thing. I mean it just yes. doesn't pass the stink test. It no, it stinks. Does not. You know, it's no. kinda like this fee increase that they're proposing. No one knew about it. Apparently this representative trout of a Republican out of Roseburg put it into the budget bill and he got passed. Uh, along with all this other budget, and it explicitly raises the fee in some cases 400 to 2,000 percent for people who were paying right. $20 for their permit while well, they're on food stamps or SSD or other low income programs. Now they might have to pay 400. So it goes up 2,000 right. percent increase. And I saw a report today that, that discussed what they would use that money for. Right. And it, it's just like the water bills we get here in Portland, if you're familiar with that. Uh, not only do you, are you paying for water, you're paying for you know this the bike path and, and, all and that this, road over yeah, there and, yeah. and something else. They kind of tag all those things on. That's what they're doing here. They're tagging on a whole bunch of opportunity for the legislature to grab money from the sickest portion of the population and, and then uh, use it for whatever things they've got. We've got a phone call. Let's go for that. Welcome to the show, caller. Hi, Paul. Hi, Tim. Thanks good for evening. taking my call. Very well. Um, Thanks for being here. I, I have some, some minor good news. I, quali I get food stamps. I'm disabled. And I get SSI and SSD. Mm -hmm. I was told by one of the 800 numbers you guys have to find a doctor by one of your associates that I needed to have 90 days of chart notes. So I'm going to see my doctor in about a week and tell him about the disabilities I have, chronic pain, and some other things that qualify me for medical cannabis. Can you tell me what the next step after that is? Once I get the first chart notes, I heard it's 90 days. Have you already turned a medical release form? No, I was not told about that. Yeah, just go ahead and get a medical release form and turn that in. You don't have to do anything outside of that. If you're already on those programs, whoever advised you via the telephone was incorrect about the, the situation. You just need to fill out a medical release form and allow your doctor to get your records, and then they can make an evaluation. I don't think you're, it's necessary for you to see a new doctor and get more documentation if you already uh, have your disability and your SSI rating. So uh, I would just recommend filling out a medical release form and having your provider, the doctor you're contacting, get your medical records. All right, and where do I get the medical release form? Um, you can get a medical release form by calling this number, the uh, 503 uh, Two three five four six zero six. That's five zero three two three five four six zero six. Going by our office uh, just off Burnside and Eighteenth in uh, East Portland. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another option. Or uh, 
going online to uh, hemp.org. You can get a medical release form there as well. And, and, and printing it out. Yeah, print it out, right. fill it out, turn it into the clinic, and then they'll get your records and set up your appointment. Thanks. The last thing I was going to mention is words of inspiration, and that is with our, you know, our, our struggle in this issue, other people have made the world a better place like the civil rights movements, right. with the attitude, we shall overcome. Mm-hmm. So we need to have the same spirit those people have, the same resilience, and we'll make this world a better place. Amen. I agree. All right. Thanks. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for your call. True words. You know, tonight, it, between 9 and Good 10 o'clock, That's there it. is going yes. to be a rally at uh, Pioneer Courthouse Square. Today uh, is the 40th anniversary of Nixon calling for a war on drugs. Mm. Uh, and so 40 years ago today, uh, President Richard Nixon, also known as Tricky Dick, the only president to ever resign in disgrace, he uh, uh, declared a war on drugs and said uh, no money could be spared in the fight against drugs. So the federal uh, drug war costs have ballooned uh, 500 times over what they are. And we've gone from uh, having uh, a few hundred uh, marijuana arrests a year to having 900,000 marijuana arrests a year. And that doesn't count the uh, possession tickets you get in decriminalized states. This is 900,000 mm-hmm. people are arrested, about 90% of them for simple possession in jurisdictions where uh, they can arrest them and take them to jail, unlike Oregon, but uh, our California now. So uh, there's going to be a rally at Pioneer Courthouse Square just uh, about 25 minutes from now, I'm going to, after leaving the show, go on down there and speak uh, at 9.30. And there will be other speakers there, including uh, the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act petition coordinator and campaign manager, Jennifer Alexander, and Anna Diaz of Oregon Normal, and Chris Van Patten, who's organizing this, of Students for a Sensible Drug Policy. Students for a Sensible Drug Policy is a national organization with chapters all over the country. There's also a rally going on in Eugene and uh, over 100 other cities. So we'll be down there to mourn the tens of millions of victims of the drug war, including the 30,000 people killed over the past three years in the drug war in Mexico, and uh, more and more every day. We have another caller. Welcome to our show, caller. Is this me on? Yeah, it's okay. you. Uh, my question is, are we going to have anybody on the inside of this meeting, or are they just... Uh, oh, yeah. Well, you know, most of the people on the uh, uh, ACMM are cannabis advocates, and it was the vice chair, Todd Delato, who's out of Corvallis and uh, uh, been a longtime activist previously from Eugene. He had called this special meeting, and he is definitely an advocate for us. So there will be a lot of people on the inside. And uh, uh, Mr. Cast, uh, the uh, interim director of the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program, will be there to answer questions and take input as well. So according to several attorneys, uh, the best place to attack this is at the administrative rule creation process. So that meeting uh, to oppose the fee increases on the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program by up to 2,000% for low-income patients is coming up at uh, 800 Northeast Oregon Street this coming Monday, uh, June 20th. Uh, So you just go there. I think it's room 131. Uh, But don't quote me on that. It's definitely 800 Northeast Oregon Street. That's the same place where we pay the fees, right? Say that again? Same place where we pay the fees? Yeah, same place we pay the fees, only the ground floor. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, One more question. Do you think this is going to pass against this or not? What's your gut feeling? Um, You know, it looks like this bill is being pushed through. It's the whole state budget, and this is just a small item in there, and the governor doesn't have a line item veto. And even though Kitzhaber has said he's uh, friendly to medical marijuana, his actions certainly don't show it. So... uh, Uh, You know, he reads his political polls very carefully, and obviously medical marijuana has over 75% support here in the state of Oregon. But all of Governor Kitzhaber's actions have shown he opposes medical marijuana. So I don't expect him to veto it or attempt to stop the budget bill based on this. I don't either. But there are ways to litigate and to, uh, 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 you know, fight this, and and we're definitely going into... uh, uh, battle mode and uh, uh, considering all our options. This affects 100% of us. 
yeah, of the medical marijuana program. Okay, uh, well, I thank you for everything you do, and I'll get off the line and let somebody else ask you a question. Thanks, guys. You thank you. We have a film clip we're going to roll right now. We'll be back here in just 30 seconds. This is Toots Hibbert and uh, on. me on the bus in Atlanta, Georgia, just a couple weeks ago. So stay tuned. Yeah, hi, Reggae fans. I want to big up the cannabis common sense out there. I'm coming to give you the reggae atmosphere. Yeah, it's a festival jam jam. Just for the meters. Same full prescription. Give it to me one time. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We look forward to it. Fourth okay. All right. So we have a big benefit concert. You want to tell our uh, audience about it one more time? Well, we have uh, it's a yeah, three-day show. One time. Uh, okay, I will. <laughs> it's a three-day show. Uh, we start off in Eugene on July the 2nd. Uh, each show, doors open at 3 o'clock. Show begins at 4.20. Uh, John Trudell will open. Uh, then we will go to uh, Rhythm Culture, followed by Dub Tonic Crew, and then Toots and the Maytals will close out the evening. Uh, the, then on Sunday, the third will be in Ben Redmond at the Deschutes County Fairgrounds and Event Center uh, at the same time. And then on Monday, the 4th of July, uh, if uh, the City Council approves. And they will. And they will. We will be at the Washington Park Rose Garden Amphitheater and uh, looking forward to this. It's been more than a decade since a show of this kind has been put on in that, in that amphitheater and we're just looking for a beautiful day and uh, a lovely crowd. So uh, come on out. You know, Toots invented the word reggae. That's right. He is the man who had a hit back in the 60s in Jamaica mm -hmm. called Do the Reggae and he transformed what was then known as ska music and created a whole genre of That's music it. and brought Rastafarianism to m merge with uh, the, the new reggae music and that attracted Bob Marley and attracted a number of other artists. So he really is one of the pioneers in music. It's not very often that someone creates a whole new genre of music, but Toots has done that. And he's uh, created an incredible body of work. He won a Grammy back in 2004 That's for right. his album True Love. And that was a combination of duets with Willie Nelson, one of our favorite friends, uh, Bonnie Raitt, and many other artists. So uh, Keith Richards among them. So uh, uh, we urge you to come down and see Toots and the Maytals. It's a high energy now He's dynamic. 70 years old, isn't 68. he? 68. 68. 68. Okay. Closing in on 70. So, uh, but he looks like he's like 45 or, or 40. He does, Reggae has done him really, well. And, and the ganja. He, he's, That's right. He actually spent 18 months in prison for marijuana back in the 60s. So after his band had become very famous, oh my. Uh, he went to jail. And then when he came back out, he, they went right back to writing hits and making Good new for records. Him. So, Good for uh, him. Uh, he is well, a certainly supporter. An honor to and have he's him here. doing uh, one and a half free shows among our, our shows for us, basically. He's yes, he uh, is. doing this as a benefit to help our effort to end adult marijuana prohibition and restore industrial hemp. I think we have a phone caller who's been standing by. Well, oh, I'd like show, to say caller. one more thing, too, before oh, we ahead. take over the caller. Uh, uh, if you do come to the show, please uh, consider carpooling using uh, alternative uh, transportation. We will have some shuttle buses. We've got extra parking and things like that. But uh, we just want you to know that uh, we're trying to look out, actually, for the Neighborhood Association. Even though they may not like us at the moment, we still love them. And we would like to make certain that we take care of them and deal with all trash and sound and other issues. So just, you know, be a good neighbor when we're up there in that neighborhood. and, and uh, uh, maybe we'll get to come back. All right. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to our show, caller. Hello. Hello. This is uh, James Clark. Hello, James, James Clark. Clark. And my question is, under this new budget bill, when I go and renew my marijuana card, mm -hmm. when I make myself my caregiver and make myself my grower, am I going to have to pay $200 a card for each one of those? If this bill goes into effect and you are your own caregiver and grower, there'd be a single $200 fee. It's only when you name someone else as your grower, that they also have to pay a $200 fee. I see. All right. Thank you very much. Now, we're hoping to stop that. That hasn't been formally enacted yet, but uh, the steam train is rolling. And so when, uh, it seems like it's going to be... When is it supposed to go into effect? You know, some people say as early as July 1st, you know, but uh, I, I just don't see that happening. I've got a $5 bet waged with our campaign manager that that won't go into effect. She believes it will. 
she's probably got her finger on the pulse of this a little closer than I do, but uh, uh, she's also written a number of examiner articles that's brought it all to light and shed some light on the dirty situation. It's just, it's a dirty backroom deal mm -hmm. that uh, just stinks any way you look at it. But one of the issues is state still has to pass a budget. And so this thing's been stuck on that, you right. know, but without it is any wrong. discussions. It's with wrong the to balance all. the budget and try to fill the budget gap with the, the sickest people. That's on the back Take of the, the sick. sickest people, the, the disabled people on food stamps and disability and claim we're going to increase their fee 2000 percent. That is cruel. And it, it, we can't balance the budget on the backs of the sick and dying. But well, that's I what the uh, they're recommending. I believe the way we fight this is with unity and yeah. we get together and get this done. I agree. Well, we hope to see you down there at that meeting on uh, the 23rd. I don't go, I mean, excuse me, the 20th at uh, 800 Northeast Oregon Street. Uh, I don't go to many of those, but I'm planning on going to this one. I'll have written well, testimony ready to submit. Thanks and for your call. We have a studio much. audience member who has a question or comment here welcome to the show hi hey could you tell me where to go get more information about Hempstead online that's a good question it's Hempstead World Music Festival that's Hempstead World Music Festival dot com you can also go to Facebook and enter Hempstead World Music Festival but you just write that whole long name out Hempstead S T that's H E M P S T A D worldmusicfestival.com. You can also get there through uh, hemp.org, I believe, each that website right there. Or you can go directly to buy tickets at ticketsoregon.com. Tickets are on sale right now online. You can go here in Portland to Music Millennium. In Eugene, you can go to Constant Gardener. Mm -hmm. And in Bend, you can go to Ranch Records and pick up tickets at any of those outlets, in addition to Tickets Oregon. Dot com. We have a film clip. We're going to roll that and we'll be back in just a moment. Here it comes. Oh, the break. Yeah, good point. So. All right, so this is an intruder that broke into our garden last January. He kicked in a panel off of the garage door, and now they're going to go crawl in here. And, and two of these people have now pled guilty. And are, they were arrested, and they've pled guilty, and they are uh, sentenced to 18 months in Oregon's prisons. They broke into the garden. Here they are inside the garden. Uh, He's kind of irritated that there's no dried marijuana in there. He kept going, come on, guys. He's just saying in there, like, uh, where is it? He's, uh, they're vegetating plants. He's, he's uh, a thief. And uh, I guess they also towed away two vehicles. They towed away uh, a truck with a canopy on the back and a big Dodge uh, a van as well. So. Uh, these thieves uh, got caught. Those ve there are the vehicles right out there. Those vehicles were seized, and they were sentenced to 18 months in Oregon prison for breaking in, which is what thieves should have happened, isn't it? That so is the police asked us right to... On, bro. Uh, right on. Yeah, the police were very supportive and said that they had uh, supported ending marijuana prohibition and... Uh, uh, restoring uh, hemp and that they wanted us to legalize it and we told them we're working on that and they seemed very very supportive and they said they'd never seen anyone 
arrested for being violent or stealing anything for marijuana or on marijuana, but dealt with alcoholics and speed people all the time. And that's uh, that story. That is. Well, there they go. They, we got to show that finally. We couldn't show it until all of that that's came right. to a conclusion. That's right. They really. told us not to show it until after their uh, cases had been adjudicated. And they have been. So now they have been adjudicated and yes. uh, went to the grand jury and they got charged with uh, breaking and entering and they had a lengthy record, both of them. And uh, two others got away. But uh, uh, I don't know, you know, we have, we have a camera out on the street there. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. since moved our garden to a more secure location. But we had a camera out on the street. We had signs up saying camera surveillance. These people, I don't know if they could read. There were pictures if you couldn't read, you know, right. so you could see pictures of <laughs> cameras in the windows. But these, you know, thieves just aren't smart. They wouldn't be well, thieves if they go. were smart. That's it. You know, that kind of goes yeah. hand in hand. So, it does. You know. That's what the just and desserts and department. And in that case, they get to be on stupid criminals in jail. Now. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. Uh, we have a phone call. Welcome to the show, caller. Hi, good evening. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Very well. How are you? I'm very well. I'd like to make a um, suggestion, perhaps, or maybe a request. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, with regards to our good neighbors that live around Washington Park. Yes. I would like to suggest that we invite all of them to come as our guests. Uh, well, actually, this is a paid <laughs> show, so, you know, they can come if they got tickets. Well, but you we know invite them to come buy a ticket, certainly. Yes. But, you know, I, I don't really think it's a whole, the whole people around there. I think it's just one lone nut who uh, happens to be uh, on the, the board of this uh, Washington uh, Park uh, uh, Neighborhood Association. I don't believe he's really representing everyone in the, the, well, the board. I, 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 I don't know that I, I you know, here's, here's yeah. how I feel. I want our friends and neighbors to be there, and I want them to enjoy themselves, whoever is there. Uh, but I know that we delivered over 550 uh, public notices door to door, and there's thousands of people that live up there. So if and we invited them, came. one of the issues is that that's all they've been having up there for the last 12 years is free concerts that everybody in the neighborhood has gone to enjoy, but they Nobody's haven't had anybody Nobody's gone to complain else. when the Nothing Symphony else. Orchestra's gone there to play. So. And it's kind of disingenuous to say you're upset about noise when once our show is over, there's going to be a huge fireworks display with lots of explosions and probably this guy's neighbor is going to be shooting off M80s in his backyard, you know, and so uh, uh, it's the 4th of July, you know, yes, it's a noisy that. holiday. So I, we're going to be done by the time the fireworks start. Oh, believe you me, I am on your side. I believe, I, I agree with you on everything except for one Thank slight you. problem. That's okay. We're listening. Uh, yeah. I, I'm a native Portlander. I'm not, I'm pretty sure you guys are, I'm not sure, but I can remember going up there as a child, and, you know, all of it, it's really, truly one of the jewels of our city. Oh, you know, it is. It's Absolutely. a real honor to be able to do a Absolutely. show there. And, and I remember going up there 40-odd years ago myself when I was young. Yeah. And it's a beautiful place. But my point, for particularly, and I appreciate they aren't necessarily going to be coming as guests, but right. even making the invite, if they want to come and pay, that's fine. But my point is, is that, you know, unfortunately, these people, a lot of them, uh, live in a different world, clearly, and they live by old school rules many times. Mm -hmm. And I think there's plenty of people up there that are probably on our side and probably oh, are I know that for a fact. Side. Oh, yeah. I, was, uh, I had Absolutely. the privilege of go actually going to the Arlington Heights, the Sylvan Highlands, and the Goose Hollow Foothills League Neighborhood Association meetings, all three. Oh, well, and awesome. uh, myself, and I got to speak at all three of those meetings. And uh, of all, the, I had to, as a requirement of our sound ordinance, document all of the comments that I received during all those meetings. So That's actually in that entire process, I came up with two full pages, single typewritten, of positive comments and one negative comment and the person who gave that one negative comment was the person who came to the sound board to protest Man and who's so asked for the therefore i feel the like council too the same even, gentleman yeah even the arlington heights neighborhood association themselves uh spoke to me and and i, I feel confident that there's that you're right you're absolutely right 99 percent of those people are very much in favor of us and they just want us to make certain we manage it well and i'm i'm okay with that you know the truth of the matter is is that uh, this guy has uh, got a little bit of publicity on this issue and it's helpful for us it in is. that 50,000 people who wouldn't have heard about it saw it on 
uh, the front page of the metro section of the local newspaper. So, oh, really? uh, you know, uh, I think it's in the end a blessing rather than a problem. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, we've we're really got overwhelming support in that neighborhood. There's just one guy who's making some noise. And we do have a couple of radio stations, KBU, yeah. K yeah. KEX, Kink is, and Kink, who are yeah. also partners to, with us in this, and so. We have a lot of people out there actually very much in favor and support of us, including the city departments I've already been working Kink with. has come on as a presenting sponsor of the Hempstead World Music Festival, and they're doing, along with KBU and other stations in Bend and Eugene, doing uh, uh, Extensive ticket, ticket giveaways, giveaways. Yes, they are. And, yeah. and bargain advertising. And so uh, we also have billboards up and advertisements in uh, most of the major publications around town. So. Along with about 12,000 posters and 22,000 handbills. So. so we've done a pretty good job promoting <laughs> this. A lot of work. Uh, we're hopeful that it'll be a real success and help us raise significant funds to end adult marijuana prohibition exactly. because that's what the funding from those ticket sales will go to. It goes to fund our petition drive and we think... Uh, and Hempstock. Uh, and our Hempstock Festival, exactly. That is so. awesome. That is incredible. So this is Thank a concert so to change the world and put oh, legalization of marijuana on the ballot to help us do further point. shows in the future. I can hardly wait. <laughs> oh, cool. Great. Thank we you. We look forward to seeing you. You know, we also have VIP tickets, which include a free meal. Well, it's not free because you buy the ticket. Yeah, no, yeah, but you no. get a laminate, a poster, and you get to go backstage and meet the artists after the show. So wow. if you are uh, uh, want to, and you get to get their autograph and take pictures with them. That so if you want cool. to uh, do that, then just get one of our VIP tickets. Okay, very good. Well, thank you so much. And thank, thank you. you for your hard work. You're thank welcome. You. I appreciate you are. that support. And for those of you who don't know about our petition to completely end adult marijuana prohibition, you want to go to this website that just popped there on your screen, CannabisTaxAct.org. We're circulating a petition. We're up to about 12,000 signatures uh, as of earlier this week. And uh, we could sure use your help. You know we're on the verge. We're starting to hire people effective July 1st. We're planning on hiring 20 new petitioners across the state. We currently have four people who are working as paid petitioners. We've sent out volunteer packages to over 800 people across the state. And we have to turn in our signatures on a monthly basis. We've already turned in over 11,000 signatures to the Oregon Secretary of State. We need to turn in 87,000 valid registered Oregon voter signatures by July of next year. But we really want to make the ballot by September. And so we have a film clip. I believe this is Dub Tonic Crew talking about the Hempstead World Music Festival. These go. guys are great. Tim gets to play with them. Nikki Davis is there who uh, has really helped us in putting this entire show together. We've got to thank, honor, and praise Nikki, Dub Tonic, Tim here. Stay tuned. <laughs> Well, big up cannabis common sense. This is Dr. Nico, live in Lake Oswego, Portland, Oregon. You know what I mean? Give thanks to the gathering. Common sense. Dr. Nico, yeah. Yeah. You don't know Dr. Nico representing, Tim representing, Nikki Davis representing, and this is the Hempstead World Music Festival family. Get it right here at Lake Oswego. I guess what now, right now, we got Dub Tonic Crew is representing, coming in from Jamaica for the Hempstead World Music Festival family. We're going to do something for all of the born Jamaicans. What do you say? Yeah, I'm going to say it, you. Born Jamaican, yo. Dub Tonic a real Jamaican, yo. Yeah, and loving and kind with the world is smile. Well, he pop a shot full of class and style. We are born Jamaican, yo. Dub Tonic a real Jamaican. Yeah. I am Nikki Lee here. We're here for Cannabis Common Sense. 
cameraman so that's uh dubtonic crew they are great they won mtv's world battle of the bands as the best new band in the whole world that was held in malaysia just about two months ago we also have toots in the maytals as we had earlier on the show to find out more go to hempstead world music festival dot com or go to tickets dot com to get tickets that's tickets oregon Com. Just to make you all jealous, that was done here just a few evenings ago at Nikki Davis's front living room after they had cooked us a Jamaican meal that was to die for. And we all ate it, and oh my word, that was nice. In one take, even. Oh, all right. Was... So we have a caller who's been standing by. Welcome to the show, caller. Yeah, is this me? Hello, Hello. caller. Uh, yeah. There you are. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Good. You got a question? Uh, my first? name's Chuck from Southwest Portland. Okay. Welcome, Chuck. Uh, I, uh, I'm a card holder a long time, uh, well, native Oregonian, uh, -huh. uh, and, uh, oh, I was, uh, I'm 59, I was a cooperative tree planter, wore my knees and back out and did a, did a lot of other stuff too, just like everybody had to do to get by, uh, and, uh, I, uh, was, uh, I, I'm, <laughs> I got some edibles from my uh, my grower, uh -huh. and uh, I was having some serious back problems. And he he instructed me, you know, what to eat. But I pretty small, but I ate too much, and I yeah, uh, if you eat too much, you can get pretty darn high. But yeah. you, know, you don't even have to get high to get the pain relief associated with cannabis. It's not the THC no. that's the primary uh, compound for pain. It's the uh, CBD or cannabidiol and the uh, CBC, cannabichromine. Those are the two primary compounds that are analgesic and actually they block the pathway for the, the associated high. Well, so you can problem. actually take the leaf and uh, just mistake. eat that and uh, get pain relief and relief from spasms and seizures and glaucoma and a lot of other things. Yeah, I just didn't... Uh... I didn't really think, uh, and I, uh, you know, it was, it was my mistake, you know, and and uh, so I just I just thought I'd uh, in, uh, inform the people. I'm a yeah, I'm a first time caller. I just about got through with Gabe with Galbraith. Got he was great. Oh, good. He was the ghost. He is show. a great guy. I'm sorry you didn't go quite talk to him, but he was he was fantastic. Yeah, you know, was. it's not that I had a. You know, I'm fine now, but I just uh, 
had a little bit of a a little bit of a problem there, so I thought that I was aware to uh, know their tolerances. It's you're right. You know your yeah. limits, man. You know. Uh, and uh, well, I guess that's about it. Uh, all right. Well, thanks product. for your call. Yeah, appreciate and your for comments. Calling in. And thanks for all your uh, hard work. I'm a long time listener. Watched every week. Thank you. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks too. for the music, Tim. Oh, you're welcome, man. And all your hard, selfless work. We appreciate so, uh, it. Thank you. You guys have a good one. You too. Thanks for watching. you got some show and tell here. I do. I've got a few items here. We're going to start right here at the very end. This is uh, from the 2008. Uh, there's a few large items. And we uh, 2008 Oregon Medical Cannabis Award. It's a blue ribbon. First place winner. That was for our Lemon Pledge strain. Uh, always good. To, uh, uh, one of my favorites. But uh, Nifty Ribbon. Then next to it, we have a bottle that has uh, extract of smart weed and uh, cannabis from Dr. Uh, uh, what is his name? Dr. Victor, an MD. It's extract of smart weed, an embossed bottle. Next to it, we have a pretty nifty apothecary bottle. This is a. Uh, uh, a uh, bottle that would you take a large batch and then sit on a uh, uh, counter. This is from 1890, and it's a tincture of cannabis indica. That's what that stands for. So this is a little apothecary bottle. Next to it, we have a bottle that has a lot of residue in it. It's about a third full of uh, a paste at the bottom, and it has a real odor and smell to it. It's got a sticker on the back that from H.R. Scott, a prescription druggist in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it says, on hand, October 1st, 1937. Uh, and that meant that uh, this was on the shelf when the Marijuana Tax Act went into effect. It's from Eli Lilly. You can see it's uh, fluid extract number 97 of cannabis indica. And uh, it's uh, a real treasure. It says it's an analgesic, sedative, narcotic and uh, used for migraines and uh, antispasmodic and made from the one gram of uh, uh, what is it one cc represents one gram of dried flowering tops next to it we have a corn medicine from raleigh's uh, they also made some veterinary cannabis medicine and uh, it's a corn medicine with ether and you put that on your corn two or three times and then it would just come right off Next door, we have extract of Car Cannabis Americana from the Mumford Company of uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, it's got some nifty little bottle uh, bubbles in the glass behind it. That's nifty for bottle collectors. Next door, we get into the modern era. This is actually a bottle of Sativex, an empty bottle that I bought online on eBay. I, like, I, I got all these things except for the the ribbon at the Oregon Medical <laughs> Cannabis Awards. We got all these other things from eBay. And so this is a, a sublingual spray. You'd spray that under your tongue. Some of it would get absorbed there. Most of it would go down your throat and into your stomach and get absorbed there. But it's oral mucosal spray of Sativex. And this is a new medicine that's just been approved in uh, Spain and is also approved in another number of other countries. And right next door, last but not least, we have a tin from the federal United States government. And this was a tin given to Elvi Masika that uh, delivered by the Bosch uh, Eye Institute in Miami, Florida. And it says it has uh, approximately 300 marijuana cigarettes came in this tin. And they came legally from the federal government. There are four people left that still, or maybe five, that still get legal medical marijuana from the federal government. They give them six pounds a year of medical marijuana. And so uh, that is the end of our show and tell segment for tonight. I hope you enjoyed that. We had a nif number of nifty little items on there. So I'm going to run down a number of quick items. First of all, we have our Oregon Cannabis Tax Act petition. We need your help on that petition. We're at 12,000 signatures. We have to turn in 87,000. Go to that website right there, CannabisTaxAct.org. You can print out a single signature sheet and sign it and mail it in to us. Or you can fill out the volunteer form and we will give you uh, petitions in the mail in very short order. 
So for more information, go to CannabisTaxAct.org or call us at 503-235-4606. That's 503-235-4606. If you or a loved one are looking for doctors who can help you get a medical marijuana permit, then give us a call. Any of those conditions can qualify for medical marijuana in every medical marijuana state. So call us for more information. Here in Portland, it's 503-235-4606. That's 503-235-4606. If you're watching outside the Portland area, you can call us at 1-800-723-0188. That new number there, 1-800-723-0188. If you're watching in Oregon here on June 17th, Friday, we have a big hearing coming up at the state office for the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program. That's going to be at uh, 800 Northeast Oregon Street. So you want to be at that meeting at 800 Northeast Oregon Street at 1.30 this coming Monday, June 20th, to uh, say we don't want this fee increase on the, those least able to uh, finance this budget gap. Uh, they shouldn't be balancing the budget on the sick and dying. And uh, boy, that about covers it for tonight. I want to thank you for watching. We'll be back here next week. Oh yeah, I'm going right down to Pioneer Courthouse Square right now. Maybe I'll see you there. I'm going to give a speech here at 930 and we're going to honor the tens of millions of victims of the drug war. So come on down to Pioneer Courthouse Square, Students for Sensible Drug Policy. Are fine. It's 40 year anniversary of the war on drugs. 40 years ago today, Richard Nixon, Tricky Dick, gave us the war on drugs. And uh, we've gone downhill ever since. We're gonna try to stop that with our petition drive. Come on out and honor the fallen at uh, the uh, vigil for the victims of the drug war. We'll see you next week. Tune in then and help us restore hemp. Good night. Here's Tim from Payton.